Hello and welcome to this video where we will be using Siemens Automation License Manager to transfer local software licenses to a remote server. Once the licenses are on the remote server, each individual programming environment can connect to the server over the network to activate their products. At Outlier, we're using an AWS R4 Large EC2 instance to host our remote server and we've connected that to our local PC network using OpenVPN. However, any PC can be used as a remote server, as long as it is reachable by the local PC. So, to get started, the first thing we'll do is install ALM on the remote server. I've already used Windows Remote Desktop to remote into my server. I'm just going to open up Chrome and search Siemens Automation License Manager to get to Siemens Download page. As I scroll down the page, I can find the EXE executable for version 6, which is the latest version at the time of this video. After signing in, the download will start automatically, and I'll choose to save it to my downloads folder. By clicking here, I can run the executable straight from Chrome. I'll hit next to start the installation and I'll have the installer delete the extracted files once it finishes. Hitting next again, we're just going to click through this whole process. And it's done. Now that we have the license manager installed on the remote server, there are a few settings we need to make so that it can communicate with our local installation. First, we'll go to File, Settings, and under the Connections tab, check Allow Remote Connections. The service needs to be restarted now, so we'll check this box and hit OK. If we navigate back to settings, we also want to make sure that this box is not checked. Now. Based on my network architecture, I need to set some inbound firewall rules to allow my local instance to get through to the server. You might not need to do this if you're not using a VPN, but if you're having issues getting the two ALMs connected, you might want to try this out. From the Start menu, I'm opening up Windows Firewall with Advanced Security. We're going to be adding two inbound rules. The first will be allowing the ALM program through. So I'm going to browse to this file, select it, and allow it to communicate through all channels. Next, I'll add the port that I know ALM is using. If I go back to ALM, File, Settings, Connection, we'll see the port in use is 4410. So I'll enter that here and use the same settings as the last rule. With this configuration done, 
I'm going to restart my remote server just to make sure that all those settings can take effect. I'm back on my local PC now, and we're going to go through the exact same configuration steps as we did on the remote server. Just want to verify again that we are allowing remote use of the license keys. Okay, now we can restart this PC too. I want to make sure that my local PC can reach the remote server over the network. So I'm going to open up command prompt and use the ping command to test the connection to the remote server's IP address. I can see here I'm getting a response, so we should be good to go. By selecting my local C drive, I can see all the licenses I have stored on this computer. I'm going to select them all by clicking and drawing a box, then choosing License Key Transfer. Then I'll choose Network and enter the IP address of my remote server. I'll give it a friendly name here. And we can see it's found the remote server. It wants to put it on its C drive, which works for me. So I'll hit OK, and the transfer begins. Now we can see that the licenses are gone from my local C drive. And here they are on the remote server. If I just drill down into this folder structure, I can right click on the license itself, hit check, and see that the license registers as OK. Now I'm going to open up TIA Portal. Then open a test project. Then I'll just open any program block so that Portal will check with the manager to see if it's licensed. Now if I go back to the manager, right click, check, we can see that the license is OK and in use. To see even more detail, I can navigate to View, Log, to see a record of all the actions taken on the manager. On the left, I can filter by number of entries, time ranges, or by the action taken. On the right, then, I can see all the details about the individual entries, including the product, the action taken, and the user who initiated the action. If you have any questions, shoot us a message at info at outlierautomation.com and check out the other resources on our website. Bye!